more shotguns. Killing time. About time. Welcome to the episode 30 special where I'm filling in the blanks as well as something new that just came out. The following shotguns were either purposely omitted or not known about when I first created gameplay footage from hundreds of games two years ago. Managing what to include in this series has been tricky as this channel's focus is purely on fictional weapons designed by game developers themselves for single player campaigns. It's all about good gameplay design here without the limitations of real world simulations. Multiplayer only shooters also lack proper enemy reactions, which is why you won't see the likes of Team Fortress 2 here for example. Like anything though, there are grey areas where I wasn't sure and a few games that got cut are now back in, along with a little extra help from viewer suggestions in the comments revealing more obscure shotguns, so thank you for helping make this the most complete list possible. <laughs> Killing Time Shotgun is very basic, as you can imagine from a game made in 1995, originally for the 3DO console but later re-released on Steam for PC, which is what you see here. The model looks very basic, even for the time, one of those early 3D model render experiments from primitive software. It does at least sound and animate nicely with a decent rate of fire. You get visual and audible feedback on each enemy hit and staggering is there too, although it's all too quick as enemy attacks should have been halted long enough for you to get your second shot in, considering the vast amount of enemies thrown at you at any one time. Like many games of this era, FPS gunplay was still finding its feet and what you get is very basic but mildly enjoyable shotgun combat with a kaleidoscope of unique enemies. Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Tides of War. We return to this original Xbox console exclusive for a shotgun not found in the PC release. Played here on an Xbox 360 for clarity, what we get is a weapon loosely modelled on a real world shotgun but tons of magical enemies of which to lay waste. Oh, and Nazis, naturally. It's really fun to use, fast and punchy, enemies have decent staggering and really nice bespoke death cycles. But sometimes it's a bit like hitting concrete with some enemies. All the sound effects associated with this gun are excellent as they really convey that sense of instant power from each shot, with ricochet, cracking wood and stone and a powerful shot sound itself. The rate of fire is excellent too, doesn't feel restricted and keeps the combat moving smoothly. Considering it's Wolfenstein's first ever shotgun, it's a good effort, I just wish I could aim it with a mouse. GoldenEye Rogue Agent. Here's another game that went rogue from my original list. This one feels like playing a time crisis game, just with far worse impacts on enemies. They clearly didn't try hard in this department and it's an insult to the GoldenEye name considering what the guys at Rare did back in 1997. Yeah, seven years prior to this one. However, the shotgun probably comes off best in this game as you don't notice below par enemy reactions so much when you get one shot kills or knock the enemy down with sheer force. So there's some satisfaction here. I love the model design, it's really unique, featuring stylish angular flair without going over the top. Dual wielding these is also good fun, it's the kind of overpowered weapon that makes a basic game like this work well.
The footage you've seen is from the Xbox 360, but here's how it looked on the original Xbox. An alt fire mode for individual barrels would have been particularly nice while dual wielding, but I don't think this game was ever trying to be that smart. Far Cry Instincts Predator So what we have here is a Benelli M3 Super 90 replica in a pretty militaristic game, but there's enough oddness to some of the enemies to get this game included. This is one right in that grey area I mentioned at the start of the episode. It's trying hard to be a realistic military shooter, something the series fully achieves in Far Cry 2 and beyond. I have you! Luckily, we're not missing much here, as it's a pared down, stripped back shooter to fit within the constraints of a console it was never designed for. What that means is everything feels basic. The quality of the modelling work is very standard, animation, projectile and sound has no real excitement to it, and the impacts on enemies are woeful. Way too often there's not even a flinch, and deaths are characterless lazy ragdolls that plagued games of this era. 20 year old killing time trumped it in this department, just let that sink in. Serious Sam 2! It's the update nobody was waiting for! So this is one I didn't miss, as the game got a major update last month where most notably they added dual wielding. And boy does this game benefit from it. The combination of shotguns you can put in each hand now is so much fun, a delightful cascade of alternating bookshot spread and timing to smash up the numerous enemies. Bigger bullet sponge enemies are suddenly not so spongy as they go down faster which really suits the pacing of this game. For this reason, their projectile category gets an improved score to give them both a solid 7 out of 10 overall. So great to see a game from 2005 get an update from the developer over 20 years later. Bravo! You are empty. Oh, this one has no feeling at all. They're going for a Half-Life 2 vibe in this game, but everything is below par, except for the projectile setup as we at least get an alt fire for both barrels, but even this is not noticeably different in sound or animation to the regular shot. Everything is floaty light, you're shooting pillows as nothing reacts properly and ridiculous ragdolls flop all over like they're on the moon. Credit for adding the odd stagger for some enemies, and I mean odd, like once in every 50 shots, and there are good blood textures applied to the enemy models where you hit them. However, this doesn't make up for how unconvincing the combat feels, there's just no satisfying impact 99% of the time. Devs, please go play Doom again and not Half-Life 2 this time. Next up on this shoehorned retro recap of sorts is Necrovision, a game which already featured in this series, but unfortunately the internet had no written record of a second shotgun being available later in the game, therefore I didn't know either. Well, it's written down now for all your keyword searching needs. Fortunately, we're not missing much as this gun is functionally identical to its trench gun counterpart and shares the same score in all categories. Its demonic model design is of course the standout difference and looks pleasing enough. The ability to attack with your mean left hand now makes for some ridiculously frantic battles too. Get the point. 
This game really wants to be painkiller, but it's just not quite there, and in fact could do with taking a chill pill. Dream Killer. Finally, I forgot to show the upgraded variants of Dream Killer's shotgun in the original showcase back in episode 15. Nothing big changes, it just adds an extra ice ball alt fire each time for a maximum of 4 shots. So yeah, you can miss hitting enemies more often now, as they still travel too slow. Each of these two upgrades adds a funky new part to this already nicely modelled weapon. Still no sign of this game being made available for modern systems however, which is a shame as, while it's a basic game, it does have some nice qualities that would be worth building on. Thanks for my good use of this. Please consider supporting on Patreon. Mmm, I love it!